and a half out. HBO. It was a big thanks for the memories today as Richmonders gathered to say goodbye to a landmark. Clear, low, for than dial up. And After years of speculation and waiting, the old Tallheimer's building finally coming down. After a charter bus. Pay any price to get what I want. A little bit of Richmond history came crashing down this morning. Tallhammer's department store has been a landmark in Richmond for years. Now from its rubble, city hoped to build a new future for downtown. Every crash of the wrecking ball, with it comes down a little piece of history. Tallhammer's department store, once a Richmond landmark. Two former employees came to witness and reminisce. Very, I feel very sad because that was part of downtown. Yeah. Tallheimers and Millen Roads were downtown. Very sad. Very sad to see it going down. A lot of nice, for me anyway, some nice memories. We're taking down an icon. We're taking down a building that has meant a lot to this city. It is the last piece of history of this chapter as we begin to open up a new history of where we're going to take Richmond. Hey, wait, Samuel, can you spare a dollar for a burger? Come on now, bust it down, uh, break it down, woo. make it sound like zero grand. See the streets is looking just like it was, uh, when it's falling apart like it does. Uh, they ain't tearing it down because, they ain't the city going back to the dust. See the dust is coming down the street, the running beat, the uh, deep beat. You can feel it in your blood, the trash and mud, the feeling of crud. It is just like it was. Boy, they going pretty by.
show so much better this year. Did you see my son? He's the talented one. We will have to speak to the director, dear, for I think you need a bigger part next year. We'll be back. We'll, we'll be, be back. back with a bigger, better part. We'll, we'll be, be back, back next year with a bigger, better part. Blessings with the less fortunate, Noel. And on every street corner you hear. Hello. Hello. Mama Grace, I'm... Mama Grace! What? I'm gonna turn it over to your daughter here while I go get the car. Take that. Mm -hmm. You know, it may take a while. I parked halfway to Charlotte. Well, still. then you better get the lead out of it. I'm not getting any younger. Oh, I'll take my time. Papa, here, do I have to stay with the girls? No way. I want you with me in case I run into any bad guys. I want you on my team, okay? No, thanks, Papa. I'll go with Papa, too. No way! Yes way! Oh, you know, voices, please. No way. Let's get Grandma Grace situated, and then we'll check out those nutcracker necklaces you were wanting. Okay, Nana. You hold tight to Papa's hand, okay, Timmy? Things are different around here, Daddy. Oh, Sarah, I've been walking these streets since I was Timmy's age. I wasn't born yesterday, honey. Yeah, he wasn't born yesterday. Excuse oh, me. You can't, you can't say We got to go. You can't talk to your mother like that. Nana, is it true that when you were a girl like me, this place was like a mall? Like a mall? I doubt it. Not like a mall better. But it's so ugly. And it's creepy. Oh, when I was a little girl, Noel, downtown was beautiful, full of life. And at Christmas time, it was magical. Oh, it was still when I was a girl. I guess it's hard to imagine. I've seen a lot of changes. You've seen a lot of changes. Honey, when I was little, I'd come downtown with my mama when she'd get her hair done over at Costello's. It was, it was right over there. And she'd give me a nickel, and I could get the biggest, best peach ice cream cone at White's. And that, that was right over there. And right here at this theater, well, I remember when they were building it. In fact, I remember the day it opened its doors. Oh, what was the name of that movie? It starred that handsome William Haynes. He was a local boy, you know. That's what you kids today would call a hottie. Mother! <laughs> All right, Granny! Yeah. Extra, extra, read all about it. Laws open tonight. Virginia's own William Haynes starts in West Point. <laughs> Blasted contraptions. Next thing you know, the air won't be fair enough to breathe around here. Miss Parker, you missed a spot. Right there. Sorry, Mr. Neville. <sighs> Why, thank you, Mr. Jameson. Jimmy. Jimmy. All right, take it around back. Ask for Peterson. I don't pay you to wash windows, Don Juan. I want that sign over there. Now! I break for lunch at noon. Noon? Okay. Jameson! Man, me and Mom must be darling at the butcher's, yes, Samuel? And I have to get to work soon, so you're gonna have to sit right over there till she comes to get you, okay? But, Pop! Don't but pop me. 
And while you're waiting, see if you can get this knot out of this string for me, will you? Sure. That's my son. Delivery for the ladies department. I'm looking for Mrs. Mayna. <laughs> no, you're not. You're looking for Miss Mayna. Oh. I'll get her for you. For the cup, always show your blessings to less fortunate Grace. <clears throat> Morning, Moses. Lovely day, isn't it? Yes, Mrs. Davidson. And Miss Grace has some mighty pretty dress you're wearing. Thank you, Moses. But my glove has a hole in it, so Mama's going to buy me a new pair. Fifth floor. Your youngest looks more like you every day, Moses. Yes, I must say that the Lord has really blessed me with this one. You enjoy your shopping now. We always do. <clears throat> guys, guys, Miss Mena. You are from fashion first, I presume. Did I not specify that this shipment arrived prior to 9 o'clock a.m.? And you know why I requested that accommodation, young man? Because Miller and Rhodes opens at 10 o'clock a.m. My customers simply should not have the placidity of their shopping experience interrupted by merchandise delivery. Good morning, Mrs. Fairbanks. Sarah Sue is offering a simply stunning suede wide brim. Perfect to complement your beautiful belted black boucle suit. Miss Manor. Mm-hmm. Ta-da. Uh, where was I? Oh, yes. I suppose there is simply no other option other than to allow you to carry on. Mrs. Rothschild, I just got in a simply sensational sapphire silk scarf. It would be absolutely astounding with your eyes. <laughs> Just so you are aware, I fully intend to address this simply shocking departure from decorum with your home office in, in New York. New York figures. So is she always simply annoying? Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did I not specify that this shipment arrived prior to 9 o'clock a.m.? We just got in this simply sensational silk sapphire scarf. <laughs> Miller and Rhodes opens at 10 o'clock a.m. Sarah Sue is offering this simply stunning suede wide brim. I fully intend to address this simply shocking departure from decorum with your home office in, in New York. New York. Figures. Oh. <laughs> Baby, don't trip across with me now. Don't go to pieces and don't be upset. And don't you chew me out. I want you hold you and whisper sweet things in you. I love you, dear. It's like I told you. Sometimes you can feel like you never hit you. So baby, how do I say this to you? I say to you. I'll tell you, baby, it's falling apart. It won't work. In your grip, you're gonna make us see, yeah, wrapping arms whenever I say something wrong. Oh, won't you help me and give me a hand fresh? Try to get a look when we go shopping downtown. Everyone thinks there's no girls smiling around town. Looking so chic, holding the stick. 
So what is a fella to do? What is he to do? Oh, tell you, babe. Hey, hey. You'll break my heart, babe. Hey, hey. We're drifting apart, baby. Hey, this falling apart. It won't do. you got to hold on to. I am sorry it took me so long, Moses. But I had to go past Miss Bailey's house and take her a casserole. Three of her children have come down with the mumps this week. Poor baby. Then I had to stop by Dr. Atkins to get me some of that liniment for my arthritis. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's been hurting me something terrible ever since I planted them new rose bushes. Ma, you could have called me. Then, Moses, I scooted on over to the old folks' home because mm. I promised that sweet Mr. Tyler that I was going to give him a, home, a little job my homemade diamonds preserve. Mm. I had been promising that for such a long time. And, Moses, the line in that butcher shop. Not the line, Mama. And Miss Conway, she had to hard select her pork chops. Don't worry about it, Mama. He's being well occupied. So I see. You know that Hope and I, Samuel? They stick together like gravy on mashed potatoes. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> I know that's right, Mama. Samuel, it's time to go. Say goodbye to Hope. But I'm showing Hope at the cradle. We have to be at the church before noon. Church again? It's always the same. It's boring. All right, now. Don't backtalk your me, Mama. It may seem boring to you now, but when you grow up, Samuel, there will come a day when you find that your faith is all you have. Then you'll discover <laughs> that your faith is all you need. Now let's go. Hallelujah. See you at supper, Pop. Later, alligator. After all, crocodile. We're having a pot roast for supper, so don't you be late. I won't be late. Love you, Mama. Love you, too. Now see you tomorrow, Hope. Right here. You always do, baby. Hey, I got you a treat. Mima, you're the best. Thank you, sweetie. Now that was the beginning of a real love story. Samuel and Hope, when they were not only raised together, they played together all the time, or they were not too inseparable till the war came. Oh, my Nathaniel, God rest his soul, and Samuel both boarded the train for Camp Pickett on the very same day. Great Grandity and Samuel fought in the Korean War, right? That's right, Rebecca. They were gone for three long years. Hold on to hope, hold on. While Hope and I waited and prayed. Hold on to hope. For them to come home. Sometimes that's all you've got to hold on to. Just like we promised we would. Hold on to hope. Extra, extra, read all about it. Frank Sinatra appearing at the mosque tonight. Merry Christmas, Hope. Merry Christmas, Reverend Martin, Mrs. Martin. Are you coming to the carol thing? No, ma'am. I'm waiting for someone. Oh, blue eyes. No, not Mr. Sinatra. It wouldn't be your Samuel, would it? I hear the 21st Regiment put in the camp picket early in the week. Well, I wouldn't exactly say he's my Samuel. Well, you keep flashing him that beautiful smile, yes. and he will be. Carol B. We will see you on Sunday. Yes, ma'am. Sunday. Let's go to church. Mary Catherine, are you sure the shrimp is on ice and the punch is punchy? Absolutely, Buffy. Cook's icing the shrimp and Reginald here has personally guaranteed the punchiness of the punch. Mayor Haddock, so good to see you again. Ah, uh, Buffy, you're looking particularly lovely tonight. <laughs> Why, yes, I am, aren't I? And Mary Catherine, your parents are doing well? Quite well, thank you, sir. There it is! It's on the ground! Drop that nosebleed! Drop that nosebleed! I love you, Frank! 
All right, we'd love to. Marcy! Marcy, all right. There you go. <laughs> I'd follow you from here to eternity, Frank. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that, that, that's cute. It's very cute. <laughs> Mr. Sinatra, it's such a pleasure to welcome you here to Richmond. And on behalf of all the citizens, I'd like to present you with this key to the city, as well as our wishes for a pleasant stay and a soon return. Uh, well, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. It is great to be back. This place is really slipping. At least the last time I was here, I got a set of golf clubs. I'm telling you. Uh, Mr. Sinatra, may I present the lovely Miss Buffy O'Hara, president of your West End fan club. Well, I'm sure you have the world on a string, Miss O'Hara. Frank, we would be pleased to have you join us at the Jefferson for light refreshments. Daddy, it's the most just around the corner. You'll absolutely adore the Jefferson, Frank. We simply must have a photo taken on the stand. Reginald. Reginald. Be a dear and dispose of these gate crashers for me, will you? Sorry, ladies, but this bash is by uh, invitation only, and well, we don't recall sending any to Nowheresville. Besides, the Jefferson requires a certain attire that, uh, let's just say, your closet is obviously lacking. Well, at least my closet isn't full of brooms, you West End witch. Brooms? What brooms? Oh, yes, you mean the ones your mama uses when she cleans my house? <laughs> hey, Ellie, how about we help Mom out and clean Witchy's clock? Yeah, we could use that mop on top of her head to finish off the job. Don't worry about them, Mary Catherine. The only class these greasers have is Mechanics 101. Hmm. They probably think Miller and Rhodes is an intersection. You're right, Reg. I think it's about time these greasers went back to Oilville. <laughs> Your type is not welcome here. I'm talking bye bye. Move on, please. You sad wannabes. Ta ta. Oh, West Enders have the breeding that Southsiders never got. Some folks were born to privilege. Ooh, I forgot.
it! That's it, Miss! Miss St. Clair, you and I are going downtown. Well, I don't think so, officer. Walton! Sergeant Walton! Well, Sergeant Walton, do you know who my daddy is? I could care less who your daddy is, miss. You are coming with oh, me. Uh, Would you oh, stop? No. Well, fine. We'll just do this oh, all right, no. oh, no. Marcy, Ellie, try to stay out of trouble, will you? Stop crying! Extra, extra, read all about it. Mary Catherine Sinclair arrested for assaulting a police officer. Sergeant Walton, do you realize who my daddy is? I'd like to be a fly on the wall when Daddy St. Clair comes to bail his baby girl as a slammer. I wonder if uh, stripes are in this year. <laughs> what are you girls going on about now? Well, Laverne, just the juiciest gossip since old Mel here mixes his two chemicals and put them in his room. Oh, really? Yes, really. Well, then come on, Marcy, enlighten us, why don't you? Well, it's it like this. You know, Frank was down at Miller and Rhodes today. Yeah, what about it? Well, a sandwich club turned out full oh. force. But, of course, by none other than Miss Nose in the Air, St. Clair. Mary Catherine. Yes, Mary Catherine! Oh, oh, you got your hair! Oh, she oh. was in, um, rare form. Let's just say she and I got in a little confrontation. <laughs> you mean cat fight? She tried to suck me one! She ducked. And guess where Miss Mary Kay's very unlucky punch landed? Okay, I'll buy it. Where? She clipped none other than our very own Sergeant Walton. Right back in the kisser! No! He was mad as a hornet. Oh, my gosh, Ellie, I can just imagine. Oh, oh it gets better. What? Miss St. Clair. Resisted arrest. Resisted arrest. Yes, she did, and the good old Sarge hauled Missy Prissy off to the station, slung over his shoulder like a sack of Idaho potatoes. Oh, and they're probably fingerprinting the little lady as we speak before they drag her off to face the music in front of the hanging Judge Sowers. Can't you just see it now? Yes, Sour Plus Sowers enters the courtroom, <laughs> approaches the bench, and takes his seat. As the jurors file into their boxes, he calls the courtroom to order. As an overpompous and overpaid attorney <laughs> escorts Jailbird St. Clair to the witness box. He turns to the judge and says, Your Honor, if I may approach the bench, please. Your Honor, this sweet young girl is a mere child, a victim of tragic circumstance. I appeal to the court's mercy. I appeal to the court's sense of patience and understanding in these matters. But most of all, I appeal to the court's sense of propriety and respect. For the long line of Western luminaries from whence this girl comes. Please, Perry Mason, may I say a word in my own defense? Well, I wouldn't recommend it, but go ahead. Your Honor, I've been unjustly detained. There's been a terrible misunderstanding. Your Honor, I've been set up in friends. This girl's from a fine upstanding family. Your Honor, you know it's not like I'm poor. Besides, I didn't do it. She's been falsely accused. I didn't do it. The police were so confused. I didn't do it. Take a look at her street address. It's among the city's best. We've been her closest friends.
did it. Catherine St. Clair, your highly flatulous family connections and vilely voluptuous bank account have no bearing in this court, therefore blindly gesticulating and fully exorcising my constitutionally sworn duty to the constipate the... Constipate. The great weight of the evidentiary merit weighing so heavily against you, I hereby find you guilty! And so, contrary to the aforementioned notwithstanding race due to cut out information, I hereby send it to 10 years in the slammer. Mr. Bailiff, conduct this West End snob to the Chesterfield County Jail. and gentlemen, and of course, younger ladies and gentlemen, and now it's time for the man in red himself, Santa Claus. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Is everyone enjoying their lunch? Well, I'm hungry as a polar bear. I'm going to sit down with my lovely Snow Queen and have a little lunch. But before I do, I'm feeling a little thirsty. Nothing quenches old Santa's thirst like a big, cold glass of milk. Here you go, Santa. Why, thank you, Snow Queen. Old Santa loves his milk, and you boys and girls should always drink your milk. But don't do it like I do, or you might get a little tummy ache. <laughs> Oh, that was good. 
Nobody drinks milk like you do, Santa. Oh. Santa, your lunch is ready. Well, it is. If you'll excuse old Santa, I'm going to enjoy my peanut butter and jelly sandwich, Santa's favorite. <laughs> And while you're enjoying your sandwich, Santa, we've prepared some lovely lunchtime entertainment for you. Please welcome to the tea room stage the Forest View Elementary School Chorus. Thank you, boys and girls, from Forest View Elementary School. Oh, well, the prancing and pawing of little hooves tells me it's time to go up on the roof and feed the reindeer. So you boys and girls remember, no fussing and fighting at home, and I'll see you on Christmas Eve when you're fast asleep. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Oh, my, Marion. Look at the time. We have to go. The rest is for you, Elizabeth. Oh, your glove, Miss Marion. Thank you. Rudolph makes the best cakes, Mommy, even better than Granny. Well, let's not tell Granny, okay, Marion? <laughs> extra, extra, read all about it. Church services and area festivities planned to welcome the 21st Regiment home. Well, Shepard, my friend, you and I have something in common. You, standing there, looking up at the stars and waiting on a baby. And me, I'm standing here, waiting here on my baby. And standing right over there is Hope, as always, waiting on her baby. Such a blessing. 
Good evening, Mrs. Baskerville and Miss Mary. A Merry Christmas to you. I hear it's going to be a particularly Merry Christmas for you. Your boy's doing. For the cup, Marion. Yes, on a 6 p.m. train. It sure is going to be a Merry Christmas. And I'm sure you're not the only one happy to see him home safe and sound. Oh, no, I suspect you have the wisdom on that one. Let's get married, and your father's waiting for us, and he has a surprise for you. A surprise? What is it? Well, if I told you, it wouldn't be a surprise. Moses, will you help me with these bags, please? Come here, Miss Crumley. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's been nice talking to you. You too. You know, I don't even know your name. Samuel, Samuel, Jordan. Ecclesiastes Stone. Well, Samuel, you take care of yourself. You too. Now, look, if you ever get in this area again, come look for me. I'll be at Millen Rose. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> That's it. That's the key. Keep hoping. Hold on to hope. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Sometimes that's all you've got to hold on to. Long time no see. Samuel, it feels like I've been waiting for you forever. <laughs> Lovely as ever, Miss Armstrong. I remember you'd say you'd come home someday and how I have dreamed and waited. How I've wished day and night for that one simple sight All these silly dreams created Make your Christmas wishes I have made mine too
dream of presence. And I am dreaming too. I played my Christmas wish as to be. Will you marry me? Well... <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have so much to plan. Come on. Come on. I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, Reverend Martin married them that spring. And they were the most devoted couple I have ever known before or since. How many children did they have? Five. Nine. Samuel Jr. He won a scholarship playing ball for RPI, and Jonathan Moses, named after Samuel's daddy. And the twins, Andrew and Benjamin. Benjamin was killed in Vietnam. Oh, that nearly broke Samuel's heart. And Ruby Kate. Oh, after all those years, Hope finally got her girl. Samuel's father retired not too long after the wedding, mm -hmm. right? And Samuel took his daddy's job at Millen Roads. I remember Samuel. He had the most wonderful smile. Yes, he did. But you know what I remember most about Samuel? It was something he said. Must have been in 76, because we had been to D.C. for the Bicentennial. <laughs> I remember you ate too, too much red, white, and blue cotton candy. Guess I'll never live that one down. Maybe it's because it didn't stay down. Mother. As I was saying, it was the day of the Christmas pageant at church, and I needed something. White tights to go into your angel costume. That's right. Mama, you were down with the flu, so you took me to Miller and Rhodes. Samuel was at his post of duty, as always. Special holiday matinee showing today of the sensational Rocky, starring Sylvester Stallone. Odds on bet to win the Oscar for best picture of 76. What do you say, Shepard, my man? You're in the prophecy. You think Stallone will get the honors this year? <laughs> Long time no see. Oh, honey, what are you doing downtown? I just thought I'd bring you a little something sweet. Ruby Kate helped make it, of course. Ooh, you always do take care of me, babe. <sighs> yeah, so I got this extra ticket to see Corn Leg on your Friday night. That's boss, man. Wanna come with? No, I don't got no bread. Just to get my old man to slide me some. <clears throat> Watch a jive turkey. Jive turkey? Uh, Samuel? <sighs> I can always count on you to keep me straight, babe. <sighs> take this with you. I'll see you at supper. Okay, dear. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Miss Tice, Miss Rudd, y'all enjoy your lunch. We always do, oh, Samuel. Wonderful, wonderful. And here's something for your Christmas holiday, Samuel. It's from the both of us. <laughs> Thank you. And you have a blessed and Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> and if you want to get a really cool gift for Dad, you should probably get him... <laughs> now uh, hold that thought. Oh, I know. Always share your blessings with the less fortunate. Here you go. That's your gift. Anyway, Dad, what Dad really wants is a CB radio. <laughs> Miss Grace! Miss Sarah! Good morning, Samuel. Y'all looking for something particular? White tights for an angel costume. For you, Miss Grace. Uh, for Sarah, of course. <laughs> She's in the Christmas pageant at church oh, tonight. Oh, how wonderful. I guess, but sometimes church can be, you know, a little boring. <clears throat> That's what I thought when I was your age, Miss Sarah. But let me tell you something my grandma Ruby told me. Sam, she said, when you find that faith is all you have, <laughs> You discover that faith is all you need. <laughs> but now that I've gotten to be a little older, thank you, I've discovered that to be true. So you find tights for little Miss Sarah on the second floor. Second floor. And for uh, Grandma Angels on the first floor. Oh, Samuel, you're incorrigible. <laughs> <laughs> incorrigible. Is that any kin to jive turkey? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Ooh. 
Samuel? Samuel Jordan? My, my, some things never change, and you, my man, are definitely one of those things. Snake? Snake Wilson! <laughs> man, I haven't seen you since, uh, since the time we were in Jackson. We were just kicking it up. Since you know, before I had my blessed assurance. No, that's not since what I was talking about. Since no, before no. I felt that amazing grace. I once was lost, but now I am found. No job, Sam, my man. I am a new creation, a new creation indeed. That's right, I got a new name written down in glory. The man you stay standing before you today is a snake no longer, because my God, oh, I wish I could get a witness up in here. I said, because my God is in the beauty from ashes business. Yes, Lord, July 4th, 1976 was the night I saw the light. When I saw that preacher man look at me off the TV set and he said, tonight's night. And I knew he was right. As a matter of fact, I can still hear that holy calling. When I, I hear it, he said, he told me you got to walk this way, talk this way. And so I did. Found myself on the steps of the Mount Zion Church where I fell on my knees and I said, Lord, Lord, how can you use a wretch like me? And then I heard him say back to me, he said, You don't have to be a star, baby, to be in my show. And Brother Samuel, Brother Samuel, I am blessed. I say I am truly blessed to be the youth choir director of that very same organization today. It's mind-blowing, ain't it, man? Where do you, you want this, Pastor Sire? Uh, you can put it right over there, Lisa. Uh, Pastor Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> well, wasn't it not too long ago I heard about you teaching disco to the blue hairs? Dude, 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 be smooth, man. You don't think I can afford these outrageous threads on just a preacher's salary now, do you? Pastor Sire, are you coming? It's time. It's time? Okay, kids, let's go! Satan is a liar. That's 
<laughs> Lord, just like I said, <laughs> when you do a work, <laughs> you show sure do it good. <laughs> now, <laughs> Josiah, yes, go get him. I'll do it. <laughs> Where you think you're going, loser? Hey, Connor, there's a man. I think that be you, brother. Uh -huh. I ain't no brother of yours, man. <laughs> Dudes, 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 what's up with the bad vibes? How about a little peace and quiet on Christmas Eve, you dig? Well, 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 look what we got here. A live job preacher freak. <coughs> Josiah, I think your kids are waiting. Man, mind your own business, job turkey. Oh, here we go with that job turkey again. <laughs> There's going to be a problem here, gentlemen. Uh... Uh, no, no problem, officer. No problem. Yeah. No problem. We were just moving along. Right, boys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. just driving. Right. We'll be seeing you around, preacher man. <laughs> you keep playing with fire, Evil Knievel, and you're gonna get burned. No way, officer. My fire insurance is all paid up. Yeah, well, if I were you, I'd do some serious praying, preacher. You see, times have changed. It's dangerous out here, and it's not likely to get better anytime soon. We don't do battle against flesh and blood. Yeah, I hope you're right, preacher. It's one of the hopes I hold on to. Hey, big guy, I'll be seeing you around. <laughs> Josiah, please watch your back. I told you, I got my fire insurance all paid up. <laughs> I understand, but watch your back. <laughs> Good to see you. Oh, God, to hope. I'm trying. <laughs> I am trying. Later that night, tragedy struck that shook the very foundation of our city and sent poor Samuel's world reeling. Unit 40 requesting assistance. We have a box of 11 o'clock. Extra, extra, Vendetta shooting in East End claims life of Josiah Wilson. Youth charged in slaying. Hey, man, you gotta pay for that. Man, you are crazy. Even looking. You know, Samuel never seemed the same after that. It was the beginning of some sad times. I think it was a loss of innocence for Samuel and for the city. Yes, it was. And then the Lowe's Theater closed just three years later with this riveting double feature, Revolt of the Dragon and Hiya! Kung Fu Street Fighter. I remember oh, no. that. We all came down for that last show. Oh, it was so sad to see that old world it's a rise up out of the floor for one last time. Things seemed to look up when they opened the Carpenter Center in 83 and the 6th Street Marketplace in 85. Oh, but then Miller and Rose closed in 1990. I can still see old Samuel there trying to smile as he greeted the last customer. Tallheimer's closed just a few years later and things just seemed to spiral out of control. Oh, Lordy, the crime rate went through the roof. Well, it still isn't good. No. Now maybe you understand why I asked your papa to be careful? Yeah, I hope he's okay. But in spite of all that, and as bad as it seems, <laughs> they're giving it another try. Holding on to the hope that something good can come out of this mess. Because some things are just too important to give up on. <laughs> yes, they are. Oh my goodness. Samuel? Huh? Marion! Samuel! Samuel, it's... It's Grace! Oh my Mr. goodness, we were talking about Mrs. you! Mrs. Baskerville? Yes! <laughs> Look! Miss Marion? Yes. And not Miss Sarah. And her daughters, my great-granddaughters, Noelle and Rebecca. <laughs> Looking at you lovely ladies. Make me think of a, another time. A better time. Samuel, I, I heard about hoping 
I'm really so sorry. You know, she's... In a better place? No. I was going to say she is truly missed at the Mission House. I can't even imagine the void it's left in your life. I know what it was like when I lost my Nathaniel. I know, I know. We just okay, need to keep pushing man. on, don't we? Okay, old man. Move along. These ladies don't need to be bothered on their night out by a bum like you. Now, wait a minute. Oh. Stop, Miss Marion. Just let it be. Let it be! Well, good news and bad news. Good news is I found the car. <laughs> bad news is you shouldn't have worn those heels, honey. The street's closed off. We had to park a couple of blocks away. We got a little hike ahead of us. He parked in a tow-away zone. Well, that's typical. Could they tow her away? I heard that. Is everything okay here? Everything is fine. Paul, this is an old friend of the family, Mr. Jordan. Samuel, this is my son-in-law, Paul. Mr. Jordan, it's a pleasure to meet you, sir. I hate to rush you, but we really do need to be going. Oh, dear, we do need to hurry, Mother. Yes. Merry Christmas, Samuel. Merry Christmas, Samuel. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Mrs. Baskerville. It's Grace, Samuel, please. Grace? Grace. Merry Christmas, Samuel. Don't you remember what... Gra when you find your faith is all you have, that's when you will discover... Now I'm 
old I've stumbled under my load As I hold on Hold on to hope Oh, yeah. forget him. Come on. It's midnight. Let's eat. Yeah. yeah. Good. What Let's little plate you packed tonight, Matt? Let's see here. Uh, leftover lamb chops again. <laughs> That's three <laughs> nights in a row. Anybody want to trade? Nah, oh, come I got on. lamb chops, too. Hey, Mark, what do you got? Uh, oh, looks like shepherd's pie. Oh, that stinks. Oh, that freaks. Oh, I lost that at breakfast. Oh. Eat your hearts out, fellas, because I got me a lamb burger combo. Uh, lamb burger combo. Mm. Super mm. size. <laughs> hey, fellas, you're new around here. How'd you wind up on the graveyard shift? Lose somebody's sheep or something? Lost his sheep. Just like you did last week. No. But my father. He was a shepherd, just like his old man. Told me the best way to break into the fields, no pun intended, <laughs> was to start out working the night shift. Oh, oh, Welcome, I'm Jake. Uh, hi. hi. I'm Jude. Oh, hey. hey, Jude. Hey, guys. But you know, to be honest, I'm not so sure about this whole shepherd career trap. What? Don't you guys ever get a little, you know, don't you get a little... Sick and tired of all these sheep? Oh, are you crazy? Sheep are my life! Bam! Bam! Without sheep, we'd be out of a job. Bam! Bam! I was practically raised by sheep. Bam! Bam! So tell them, guys! We're not sick of sheep, are we? Are we? Yeah. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Yeah. 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 I guess I am too. Daddy was a shepherd, just like his old man. And when 
when I was born, I was surrounded by lambs. Whenever I had trouble trying to get to sleep, Mama used to say, try counting. <gasps> I know it's nuts. I know it's crazy, but it takes a lot of guts to say what every shepherd here is afraid to say. We're sick of watching where we're stepping just to miss what we might step in on the way. Listen to the bleep in our sleep. And tell me where in spring or summer there's a creature that is dumber than a sheep. Cute and so cussy, so trusting and so sweet. Better with me, Jelly, when the day is complete. Get over there. I'm so sick of sheep. From the sneaky occupation Catch up on my sleep Eat only beef Pull the wool over my eyes I'm sick of sheep I've got this rash When I'm around it seems I always got a scratch I get this sneeze at Halloween that's a fact. Oh, what a tragedy, my flight is. Can't you feel the dermatitis on my back? I'm going to tears. I just keep wasting my potential through the years. You know the grass is always greener, but I need a job that's easier on my ears. They call me the black sheep of my family. I just want to be free. I'm so sick of sheep. I'm getting too deep. No more guys. Someday you'll find them. Headed for disaster while I find me reading pastures. Voices in my sleep. Go bling, bling, bling. My rod and my staff will be covered.
angels singing? The Messiah. Now nah, we've been waiting for centuries for the Messiah. Tonight. It's gotta be. Why would he show up tonight? And why in this old little town of Bethlehem? And why tell a bunch of mutton heads like us? The prophecy says out of Bethlehem shall rise a governor to rule Israel. Nah, I'm not traipsing off, leaving a few scrawny sheep I do have to go look for some baby lion away in a manger. Well, I'm not as stupid as I look. That's right. That's right. Well, I'll stand right here. I've ever seen. I've never seen anything like it. No. And it sounds like we have a new arrival. Thaddeus, Tabitha, Rachel, come quickly and bring another blanket. What makes you think this is the way? Yeah, you know how many mangers there are in Bethlehem? Not many with a baby lying in them. I don't know, but... Well, I just... don't believe it. Oh, right. 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 I believe. And look. Tiny fingers move in mine. I feel your heartbeat keeping time. All the
<laughs> a hope for all time. All <laughs> to all. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on to hope. Hold on to hope. It's your song. You just got to sing it. Time that can leave you searching for something to hold on to. And with all that has changed, seems all that remains is a hope that's true. Someday that hope that you find so feeble. Will stand in eternity And you'll never be alone Forever your home Pray for the eyes to see Look and see So I will hold on to hold Hold that promise in your heart Hold on to all that I Brother, can I buy you a burger? <laughs> well, seems I got no other pressing engagements. <laughs> well, what do you think about the city's latest Beauties of Ashes program? No, no, wait a, minute, wait a minute. I'm so rude. I don't even know your name. Ecclesiastes. Oh, Ecclesiastes. You think they'll make it work this time? Well, what I have to say about that is sometimes faith 
is all, all you need. need. That's what I'm talking about. All right. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Thank you for coming this evening. We love to tell you our little stories. And I can tell you that everybody involved here this evening from our orchestra to our cast and crew to our ushers to our folks in the parking lot when you came in. We are concerned about one thing. We want you to know that our hope is built on nothing less than Christ our Lord. That baby in the manger is why we do all of this. Because he's done something in our lives and he's given us hope. I don't know, the, in a room this size, there's probably some of you out there that are feeling hopeless. Uh, maybe you've gotten some tough news from a doctor or uh, maybe you've had enough financial difficulty. Maybe um, there's relationship problems. Maybe you're going through uh, marital problems and you feel hopeless. We really do believe that our hope is based on that baby that was brought to us in Bethlehem. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who wasn't just in a manger, but actually is in this place this evening. And he's real to us. We want him to be real to you. Our hope is built on nothing less than him. I'd love an opportunity to pray with you tonight just before we go. Would you pray with me? Um, thanks, God, for uh, the gift of being able to share this again this year. And we really care about these people that are sitting here in these pews. We want them all to know you. We want all of them to have faith and to trust in you and for their hope to be in you tonight. God, will you help them, some of them in their unbelief? Will you just give them a gift of faith to believe in you and to trust you? God, for those that are here tonight that are broken, that are, that are really having some challenges, will you, will you help them to risk to hope and trust in you tonight? And we'll thank you for that. Bring life to them. Amen. We end uh, our programs each year with, with a song we call The Midnight Cry. Uh, most years it ties into what we do. Some years we just end because we've done it as a tradition. You know, we love tradition in Richmond, Virginia. Sometimes it doesn't have anything to do with the story. We just like the song. The Midnight Cry, however, this year has some significance to us because our hope really is in being with the Lord forever. Scripture says it this way, that one day he's going to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. It then says the dead in Christ will rise first and those of us who are alive and remain, we will meet him in the air. And then the important thing here, forever we will be with him. Hold on to hope. Hold on, I hear the sound. And it's of a mighty rushing wind. And it's closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet when Gabriel sounds the call. He sounds the call at the I look around.
around me and I see prophecy it's being fulfilled everywhere the signs of the time they're appearing everywhere and I can around me I see prophecies fulfilled everywhere the signs of the times they're appearing 